You're talking about a revolution. It sounds like a whisper. Hello, welcome to another show of Citizens, New Hampshire Citizens for Progress. Uh, we're going to be discussing what's going on with Howard here. Is it uh, we got the Public Utility Commission? There's a couple seats opening up. Are we going to have representatives of the public or are we going to have representatives of the industry put in these places? We have community power. They've submitted a bill in regards to that. I mean, this was looking really exciting for people to take control of their market and where their, where their energy came from. And this bill, it gives, it might as well be monopoly power. It's given all the power to the industry and all the things, good things we accomplished are going to disappear. And energy efficiency, that's been put on hold. That's our best bang for the buck. Hello, I am Susan Richmond. I am just a regular citizen, a mother, a grandmother, a part-time teacher, used to be a full-time teacher. And with my extra time, I am dedicated to what I can do to make us take action on climate. And there are a lot of people in our state, in our country, in the world that care deeply about climate, but unless we unite our voices, we have no effect. So uh, a number of people and I are putting together a network. We don't even have a name yet, um, but we're sending emails to each other with all the information that is so alive now and talking about actions we can take and are focusing on in the energy efficiency and community power and the makeup of the PUC right here in New Hampshire. So we hope that maybe you'll find we're a useful group to join onto. Hello everybody, I am Don Kreese. I am an attorney who serves as New Hampshire's consumer advocate. The Office of the Consumer Advocate is a state agency whose job is to represent the interests of residential utility customers at the Public Utilities Commission and everywhere else, including the legislature. And uh, I was first appointed to my job in early 2016 by Governor Hassan. And then I was reappointed uh, to my second term by Governor Sununu. So I am a living, breathing example of bipartisanship. And I believe that energy policy is not a partisan struggle, but a struggle for progress and virtue. I'm Henry Herndon, uh, energy professional here in New Hampshire, currently working for Community Power Coalition of New Hampshire and helping cities and towns move forward on their pathways to community power and, and taking control of their energy futures. Energy efficiency, Don. This is the hill you said you were to die on. I don't want you to die, Don. You've doing, been doing such good work. Uh, well, uh, may it please the court. Uh, hopefully this is not the day that I die, but I do believe as the state's uh, advocate for residential utility customers that energy efficiency is the single best thing that I can deliver to the constituency that I represent. Uh, I worked up a settlement deal with the state's utilities uh, on a bold three-year plan for ratepayer-funded energy efficiency that would have ramped up our savings to 4.6% of sales. And we presented it to the PUC for approval by the end of the year. And the PUC said, well, we're not gonna get it done by the end of the year. We need eight more weeks to figure it out. So I'm waiting for the PUC's decision. And meanwhile, there is a bill pending in the legislature that I think would have the effect of gutting our ratepayer funded energy efficiency program. So I'm very concerned about this. I'm a cheerleader. I am part of several citizen activist groups that are concerned about the climate and realize that we weren't talking to each other and we're putting together a network, uh, sharing communication, but also sharing action. So uh, Rick Maynard's gonna put my link up on the screen and you can sign up at that link and let us know if you would like to get information from us and be involved in charting actions. But I can tell you right now, letters to the editor, talking to your own town council, city mayor, energy committee, housing authority, lots and lots and lots of people care deeply about energy efficiency, even if the PUC or the governor are not thinking about it. So we need to use our citizens' power 
to say what is good for us. That's local control. And if I might, uh, another idea is to pull up your email, address a message to puc at puc.nh.gov, uh, put docket number DE20-092 in the subject line, and just tell the PUC to approve the energy efficiency settlement agreement. It's that simple. So I want to, would I be correct in saying, Don, that the efficiency money is spent, it creates the jobs here in New Hampshire, whether it be weatherization or uh, the other upgrades, electrifying the house, uh, heat pumps, whatnot, that money stay in the New Hampshire economy. May it please the court. I agree with that entirely, Rick. I think that a uh, ratepayer funded energy efficiency is uh, a great pandemic stimulus package because it puts New Hampshire people to work. It keeps all the uh, wealth in state instead of exporting it to uh, big electric utilities and fossil fuel companies. And, um, and eventually we get all the money back in the form of lower electric bills. So it's, uh, it's a win all around. So Don, can I ask for clarification? Does this benefit low-income people more, this money is targeted towards them, or is it equal that business, uh, businesses can benefit from it also? Um, may it please the court? Uh, Susan, that is an excellent question. Uh, uh, we reserve 20% of the uh, incoming money for the low-income program, so there's a special emphasis on low-income energy efficiency very important because uh, uh, low-income folks tend to live in very energy inefficient places. But uh, there's a lot of energy efficiency potential in the commercial and industrial sector. So there's a lot of resources uh, devoted to improving the efficiency of our businesses and factories as well. Okay, and, and I'd like to underline what you said. New Hampshire does not produce energy, uh, does not produce fossil fuels. So if you're using gas or oil, we're getting that from out of state, but if we're efficient, we're not sending that money out of state. And the jobs that are created insulating your home, those are New Hampshire jobs. That's keeping the money in New Hampshire. Okay, I'd like to, I'd like to move on to community power. Uh, this is something that the state of New Hampshire has been working on since 1996. When, electrical deregulation started, to be able to make that market competitive for the public to enjoy the best results. And uh, House Bill 315 looks like it's gonna change this from community power to monopoly power. Uh, we have Henry Hurd on here, that's uh, formerly with the Clean Energy New Hampshire and now employed by Community Power New Hampshire. Uh, Henry, what's going on with this? Thanks, Rick. So listen, in 2019, Governor Sununu showed a lot of leadership when he signed the community power law, and he really updated that 1996 statute and made it modern. He made it usable for um, our present needs of grid modernization. And um, it's really, a, it's a bipartisan thing. And now we've got Eversource pushing for legislation, House Bill 315, that would absolutely gut Governor Sununu's community power law. So this bill, it would undermine the ability of community power to allow our cities and towns to uh, have local control, to save more energy costs, um, to increase resilience, and really invest in local energy systems and renewable energy systems. So it's, it's quite upsetting, and um, hopefully we can get a lot of folks to, uh, to come out in opposition to this pretty bad bill. Uh, if I might just leap in. So my favorite novel is Moby Dick all about the whaling industry. And I ask you to think about this. Why are the whaling companies of the 19th century no longer in charge of your energy? It's because they couldn't adapt. They had to yield to a new generation of companies, the electric utilities. They figured out how to wire up America and deliver electricity. They are now in at a point where their ongoing existence is threatened 
and community power, meaning uh, programs that allow your municipality to take all the electric load in their borders and do something creative and interesting and money saving with it. That is an extinction level event for these electric utilities. And finally, the, the restructuring act has been on the books since 1996. Well, finally, this kind of thing really could mean that we'll finally get to that paradigm shift. The utilities know that. That is why they've drafted House Bill 315. They're not going to say that, but they know that they are th uh, uh, threatened with extinction. So they are going to fight like the Dickens to preserve their hegemony. So, Don, I, I agree with you in some senses. I think extinction might be a little bit of a strong word. Like we always we're always going to need a distribution grid. We're always going to need a utility company to, to maintain those poles and wires and deliver power. And that's important. And they should be paid and compensated for that. I think you are right that there is a threat to, you know, if we're reducing load and we have less reliance on big transmission infrastructure, less reliance on big centralized power plants, that's going to hurt some of the revenues to some of these, uh, you know, Wall Street utility companies, these, you know, quarter to quarter shareholder revenue focused entities. I think extinction might be a little bit of a strong word, but, but yeah, when we talk about creating an innovative electric grid where We've got access to data because we have smart meters and everyone can have distributed storage and solar and, and shape their load and build that local clean energy economy. You know, there, there may be some threat to the utilities there. I think extinction is a little bit strong. Well, may it please the court. Well, uh, all right, maybe extinction is a little bit of an exaggeration. But on the other hand, when that asteroid came in, you know, and not, uh, it didn't wipe out the dinosaurs all at once. It took a while. You're right, though, that the poles and wires business will still exist and the utilities will still have to provide that business, but that's way smaller and limited than what they want to do, which yeah. is dominate your energy use. And just one, one more point on this. What this bill does, it's, it's imposing regulation on every city and town in the state of New Hampshire that wants to do community power. It mandates that they have to go to an adjudicated, litigated process at the Public Utility Commission to approve their energy program, which is absolutely outrageous. It's completely the anti New Hampshire in every single way. Um, and it's really offensive how sort of these, you know, these regulated monopolies, they then hide behind their regulation and uh, they use it to protect themselves from competition. Two points. Number one, this sounds so much like what was happening in 1776 when King George III said, you want tea, you got to buy it from me. And there is some tea that ended up in the Boston Harbor because people weren't interested in operating that way. They wanted local control. But secondarily, the big arbiter on a lot of these decisions is the PUC. That stands for Public Utilities Commission, except that we're in danger that instead of it being run by the public, that members of this commission are industry lobbyists or industry members. And so if you're writing letters, please also write to the governor and to your executive counselor to say, make sure that whoever is appointed to the PUC does not have connections to the fossil fuel lobby. Uh, oh my God. So Susan, I think of June 7th, 1898, because that's the day when Samuel Insel, the guy who eventually came to basically dominate the whole electric industry, gave a speech to his fellow utility moguls and said, you know what? We should ask to be regulated. We want the government, meaning state PUCs, to set our prices, and we want them to give us a guaranteed monopoly franchise. And he convinced his fellow titans to do just that. And that is the paradigm that has allowed electric utilities to be dominant influences on our energy since uh, the beginning of the 20th century. Well, it's the 21st century. It's time to have a new paradigm. And I think community power aggregation or community power is the is the pathway finally to that new paradigm that's why i'm so enthusiastic about it community power it's really like a new hampshire way forward on energy issues we're, we've always liked to chart our own course and this is one where it chooses markets over mandates we're talking about local control not monopoly control we're talking about innovation not regulation and there are so many communities out there working towards this and it would be really a shame to see all of that hard work go to waste because of this house bill 315 so if folks um, want to voice their support for community power over monopoly protection, there is a sign-on letter going around. 
Um, and we'll, we'll share that information with folks. And we really invite you to contact your legislators, tell them you oppose House Bill 315 and sign on to that sign on letter to, uh, to help support community power. I just heard a talk from by uh, a major climate scientist, Michael Mann, and he said that the one of the things holding back climate now is not climate deniers, but climate procrastinators. Let's just do a little bit. Let's be gradual. Oh, it's too big. We can't do anything. I am just so depressed. I can't act. Get over all that. We need to act now. We need to be loud. It is up to you. If not now, when? If not me, who? So you do need to write those letters. Please, please, please. I, I want to just uh, mention something in regards to the executive council here. I mean, New Hampshire is the only state to have the executive council. And that was put in because the king appointed the governor. And the executive council was the citizens committee that represented the citizens. So it put a check on the king's appointment that five citizens would approve what he did, that he could not make the decision by himself. And it, a little bit worried now that this might be a fox got in the hen house, that as opposed to citizens on that board representing citizens, is we're going to have corporate interests represented. Henry, could you share with us a few of the specific uh, projects that are going to be affected by this? So the, the Public Utility Commission oversees a lot of really important issues, whether it's changing the rules on net metering or energy efficiency policy. You know, there's the, Don, how old is it? The six to seven year old or perhaps deceased grid modernization <laughs> docket. Um, it's only six, you're exaggerating. Six year old, perhaps deceased grid modernization docket. That docket is now going off to first grade. It's six years old. Yeah. Um, but, but importantly, there are rules on community power that the Public Utility Commission, I think it's been something like 535 days since we signed this into law and directed the Public Utility Commission to create rules to allow community power to move forward. We haven't seen the, the first proposal for those rules come out yet, even though uh, com community volunteers and, and city leaders like Clifton Bilo uh, worked really hard with the commissioners and the utilities to draft those rules. So we're still waiting on important rules on community power. Um, it's an important institution. Uh, good for people who want to write letters to the editor that the specific um, uh, pieces that have been knocked out of community power are the ones that allow uh, aggregators to, um, to reward uh, distributed generators. Uh, there's no metering uh, that they can do and there's, uh, there's no uh, plan for how they're going to compensate uh, the uh, independent um, say residential uh, PV owners that are contributing um, uh, power to their, to their grid. One good example is the city of Nashua owns hydro dams. They like to provide electric power supply to their residents and businesses from those hydro dams. House Bill 315 takes away their right to do that. If you wanna build a local solar array and use that to power your Portsmouth community power or Concord community power, House Bill 315 does not let you do that when you're currently allowed to do that. Yeah, so one example of how House Bill 315 really, really guts community power is community power would enable the city of Nashua, for example, who owns hydroelectric dams, to use those dams that they own to provide electric power supply to all their residents and businesses. And House Bill 315 goes in and strikes that language and it no longer, it takes away those rights from the city of Nashua. Say there's any town in the state, they've got some, some nice land, maybe it's suitable for a solar array. They wanna put a nice solar array there to provide electric power supply to their residents and businesses. That's strike from the law under House Bill 315. Another example of the ways, um, there's sort of this insidious uh, angle here in this bill. It, it makes it impossible for a city or town to actually comply. So, the law states in this new amendment to the law, a city or town must mail notification to all retail electric customers. Then in another part of the law, it says the town can only use public records to send mailings to those customers. Well, that's impossible because the public records only identify property owners. Some of those retail electric customers are renters. So they put these little poison pills in the law that make it impossible for a city or town to comply as a way of sabotaging 
uh, community power wholesale. I agree with uh, Henry's meta analysis that this is really just a way. I mean, the, the title of the bill is uh, relative to aggregation of electric customers. And, you know, the analysis says this bill revises the procedures applicable to municipal or county aggregators and municipal electric utilities for the aggregation of energy, energy services. So the authors of the bill are way too clever to say, the purpose of this bill is to make community power aggregation impossible. They don't say that. They just have all these little things that are really poison pills. They know what they're doing. And so uh, like to, to, to my way of thinking, in terms of public outreach, like talking about the details of this bill are almost like, it's almost irrelevant because like, you, uh, you know, an energy consumer or like a resident of the town of Hanover, say, you know, you don't really need to know the details of how the guts of the bill works. You just need to know what the utilities are trying to pull off here. Couldn't agree more, Don. Well said. And if people really want to fix community power aggregation, you know, make the enabling legislation more, I don't know, work better. Well, there are three bills that are going to be introduced in the Senate with Republican lead sponsors. Uh, all of them will have Jeb Bradley's name on them. Jeb Bradley and Cliff Bilo are the architects of electric restructuring. And uh, Deputy or Assistant Mayor Bilo has been working with Senate Majority Leader uh, Jeb Bradley on these bills. And you know that's where the action really is if you're really serious about making sure community power aggregation works. So this bill should be ITL'd. Those bills deserve a respectful hearing. Well, this has been being worked on since 1996, where Clifton was the uh, co-architect of electrical deregulation. And we've been slowly moving to this being a viable means for cities, towns, or municipalities to be able to provide their citizens with the best purchasing of electricity for their citizens. I mean, as we see with Lebanon and and Nashua, the needs and availability of power varies per community. So it really makes sense to allow the communities to determine their needs and their supplies and, and get the best price possible. Yeah, we, we have been moving slowly, but meanwhile, uh, customers in this state uh, and residential customers have borne the brunt of this, have literally paid hundreds of millions of dollars in stranded cost payments to make the utilities whole when they had to sell off their generation assets at a loss. So, you know, this, this the, the road that we've trod since 1996 has been super expensive for customers. It is time for residential customers in particular to start getting something out of that because it hasn't materialized yet at all. Been talking about plans to move New Hampshire into maybe the 20th century with energy savings and that's included things like net metering that towns desperately wanted to be allowed to have, uh, keeping up with our energy efficiency, now community power. Each of those would keep the dollars in the state more rather than sending them out to fossil fuel companies in other states. But they would also save us so much on our own uh, fuel costs, save us on the health and property damage that comes from pollution and help bring down climate crisis problems for all of us. So these are, are such good plans that we keep refusing to endorse as a state. A lot of our policies are finally determined, yay or nay, or settled, argued in between at the Public Utilities Commission. It is only a public utilities commission if the commissioners represent the public. And right now we only have two commissioners and we need to have three. And so our unnamed group is very concerned that Governor Sununu might name a new commissioner who is allied to the energy industry, someone who is, is or has been a lobbyist or an employee or a large shareholder in the energy area. And it really needs to be someone who is more of a, a voice for the public. So please, you have an executive counselor from your district 
that person is going to have a say in whether or not Governor Sununu's appointment goes forward. Contact your executive counselor, contact the governor. Please say this is too important to New Hampshire's history, to New Hampshire's future. We need to have a public utility commissioner who is thinking of the public. This show is about public advocacy and you need to let your representatives know they represent you. And you got to tell them what you think and what you feel and what you would like to be done for them to represent you. Uh, you've been doing this in several different ways, Susan. Can you share those with us? Individually, our members have been writing letters to the Public Utilities Commission. We've been writing letters to our representatives in the State House and to Governor Sununu. We've been notifying our own town councils our own mayors or town administrators. We've, we're have we beginning to write letters to housing authority partnerships throughout the state and other organizations that help people who need the help of energy efficiency. So the organizations that get the funds that Henry is helping to oversee. So there's so many stakeholders, so many people who stand to win or lose, but either they don't know this is happening or they just have that sense of, what can I do? I'm just one person. And, and we need to recognize that we have to get past that despair and be active. We do hold the power, but we have to, we have to take it. We have to move forward. Um, once again, if you'd like to know what we're doing, you can sign up to be on our email list and help us figure out more useful tactics. Okay, I do wanna share something. Most of these, um all these energy bills go, go through the New Hampshire Science, Technology, and Energy Committee. And when you go to that committee page, you can have one letter, email set up, and you can click email them all. It, it's really easy. You don't have, or you could go each individual one if you want, but there is a button there, email all. Well, I wanna thank everyone here for joining us today. Uh, Don, Henry, you got a closing statement before I say goodbye to everybody? Uh, well, I can say goodbye. Uh, well, th <laughs> thank you, Rick, for the opportunity to be on this excellent program again. Uh, I, I, I think that citizen engagement when it comes to matters of energy policy is really important, really impactful. It often makes the difference. And so you should do you should follow all the advice you've gotten today to Write to the PUC, write to your legislators, write to your executive councils and make sure that the right thing happens. Yeah, I just want to say thanks, Rick. Really appreciate uh, you inviting me on the show. And uh, for any of the viewers out there, if folks want to get community power programs started in their city or town, reach out to the Community Power Coalition. We can help you get the ball rolling. And please contact your legislators in opposition to House Bill 315 and sign the, the sign-on letter online. So I want to share one thing with the viewers out there. Community Power New Hampshire is a group of experts that have business experience in the industries required. And that way, that group is a statewide organization to provide information, services, and help each of the cities, towns, municipalities set up their community aggregation plans, which is the pur purchase of electricity for their citizens. So I want to thank all the guests for joining me today, and especially you, the viewer, for watching this. I hope you enjoyed. Take care, be healthy, be safe, and thank you. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors or underwriters don't you know you're talking about a revolution you gotta let 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 the video have that clip of dawn <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're uh, it's, still, it's still recording i see yes. oh, yeah. that email address for the whole committee really <laughs> does work i use it all the time and uh it, 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 that is the way to get your written comments directly to every single member of the committee. And there are a bunch of new people on that committee in both caucuses who are, you know, they're busy having their minds programmed right now. So why not play a role in that programming effort?